arrived in Kampala a lot earlier than expected. It's like 6 a.m. right now, and I was completely knocked out. The bus was empty, and the guy was like, you're in Kampala, it's time to go. Hey, Alama. Hey, Alama, noi, noi. Mama, so go, buri, wing, ala, wanzi, ya, see, sunshine. We've been in Uganda for just a couple hours. We're with our host Musa. And what are we about to try? We're gonna try Rolex. And you have chapati. That's the bread uh, with some fried eggs. Mm. And then the two are put together and then roll. I think Kampala is trying to rival Dar for the best produce market. We've got pretty much everything here and really good prices too. What's your favorite part about Uganda? Oh, the friendliness of the people. You know, the ever smiling population that's the favorite that is so true i was actually yeah. telling Musa before this is my second time to uganda and the friendliness and hospitality that the ugandans showed me the first time is really what drew me back Musa had the idea of making a neighborhood feast for our first night what are we gonna make now we're gonna make some rice cool fried rice yeah. Musa was telling us in uganda when the men cook the women laugh at them yeah say what are you doing cooking that's our job but here we are this is gonna be delicious and we're going to prove everybody wrong. They just need for more water. More water? Their own containers and then all... Yum, yum, yum. The next day we decided to investigate a Ugandan storyline that really interested us. A young politician named Bobby Wine. In Uganda, I see hope. The president is named Museveni. He's been in power for over 30 years. Bobby Wine has been a huge threat to him, and it's really interesting to see what's going to happen here. He's a young musician who's challenging the status quo, challenging the power structure. This is a message to the government, government. expressing what's exactly on the people's mind. His supporters wear these military caps. It's a peaceful revolution, but it's still a revolution. He's been put in jail many times for doing nothing other than being a popular politician. So, free Bobby Wine, graffiti is all over the place. People love him here. Fire Record Studios, this is where Bobby Wine still records. We're currently in Bobby Wine's studio where he records his music. And actually, a few songs on this vlog are by Bobby Wine. Coming soon, 2021, baby. Bobby Wine, look out. We explored the area Bobby Wine grew up in and met a bunch of his old friends, one of which was the number one boxer in Uganda. I got some quick lessons, and then we ended up running into Bobby Wine's brother, Dax Vibes, who is also an artist. So we got Hassan, he's our driver for the day. Yeah. He's actually Musa's driver usually. He says it should be fine, it should be comfortable. So. Three three people on this yeah. thing, Musa? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> we just got pulled over by the Ugandan police for having three people on the back of a motorcycle. They didn't even get pulled over, they more like ran up to us they, while we were in the middle of an intersection and we like tried to plunge through but they like grabbed our they handlebars. grabbed us. Threw the driver jumped off. Jumped in front of us. Took the bike, put it all the way into the secured police station, like behind the fence, locked it up. But now we're just walking to the place we were gonna go to and the bike's back there. But we're gonna figure that out later. We might have to do some under the table bribe or something. But we got the bike back, it's right here. Woo. We had to pay a 45,000 <laughs> shilling bribe, which, what is, what is that like? It's like 12 bucks. Uh, Hassan did the dirty work for us. Hassan said the cops saw two white guys in the back of a boda boda and said, ooh, they have money. I'm gonna stop them because there are plenty of boda bodas with three people on them. But he didn't want to do the bribe while we were there in case we vlogged about it. So we, we had to go away. Hassan had to go back and give him the money. Now the world knows Ugandan police are corrupt. If you hey! didn't know that before. It turns out the situation we were in yesterday wasn't uncommon. We just walked by the police station and we saw 
a ton of Boda Bodas that they've taken. People that couldn't pay the bribe, their Boda Boda's gone. The entire city center of downtown Kampala is just one giant goodwill. Heading back home for the night. The Musa's crib. Musa, what are we making? Oh, we're gonna make some matoke. Matoke. Yeah, it's a, it's a delicacy. It's mm -hmm. a staple food in the central part of Uganda. Yes, Woo! it is. Fish. Look at that, Justine. What do you think? Mm. We're almost done. This is the finished product. Mm. Hugh, what do you think about it? Such an amazing combination of flavors. Mm, it's the best. The best. Yeah. The best. The best of the best. The best Woo! of the best. Yeah. So we decided to visit Musa's family in a yeah. rural village today. So yeah. right now I'm on a boda boda with my guy James. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you do, eh? Yeah, we're we're going down these dusty, <laughs> bumpy roads on this motorcycle. <laughs> What do we have here? Yeah, we have cassava and beans. It's called katogo, a katogo. Here we are harvesting some peanuts. Yep. Interesting. Wow. Mike, uprooting a cassava plant. And we always see it in the... Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> Mango hunting. Mm. Uh -uh. Up here in the tree, picking some avocados. Gonna toss one down to Mike. Mike! Yeah. 15 minutes of work and we got all these avocados. Nice. That's a lot of avocados, Hassan. Go, Hassan, go. Go, Hassan, go. Is he gonna make it? Yeah, he's definitely gonna make it. Okay. To our viewers, I'm really sorry. The goat was just part one. Now, we're gonna slaughter a chicken. We're having chicken Uganda style tonight. They buy them fresh here. There's our chicken. Oh, let's stay out of the house, buddy. It's good. <laughs> Hugh and Hassan are busy cleaning the chicken, and inside, we found this, which is a egg, but it's a little squishy, so this one was gonna be ready tomorrow. On our last day in Kampala, Musa took us to an elementary school where his good friend is the principal. We got the honor of presenting a trophy to the students for winning a netball tournament. I honestly have no idea if it was a big tournament or not, but of course, we made it a big deal. Netball champions, London Life Primary School! There was a gap in the rain, and so we're gonna use this opportunity to take our bus out of Kampala. I'm about to say a sad goodbye to Musa and Hassan. The rainstorm set us back a little bit, so we didn't make it all the way to Kabali, which is where we're going tomorrow. We had to stop in Mabarara. Got this little guest house for the night. After all this traveling, we got Two more minibuses left. My first time in Uganda two years ago, I met Edson at Makerere University in Kampala. We only talked for like 20, 25 minutes, and we've stayed in contact, and here we are, two years later. Here we are. Again, connecting again, and very happy together, by the way, having fun around in Barara City in Western Uganda. We are just on the bus, and it turns out we heard a chicken squealing. Someone took a live chicken on the bus, so I just wanted to let you all know that. Enjoying the hike, Mike. What do you think? Pretty beautiful? So beautiful, definitely worth a stop. We're wrapping up our first night in Kabale with our new host Harriet and having a party in the kitchen. Mike, what do you got there? I'm carrying a mattress, some salt, some sugar, and some maize flour. Yesterday we were on a hike here in Lake Bunyoni 
and we were watching the sunset over this beautiful view. It was getting dark, so on our way down, got kind of lost, and this farmer came up to us and wanted to help us find our way. So he ended up leading us to his house first, which was on the way. We chatted a little bit, and we met his wife. His wife is 19, and she's pregnant with her first child. And before we left, I asked, have you ever had visitor before? And he said, no. I said, how about we come back tomorrow, we bring some food, we could share it together, and we could learn a bit about your way of life on the farm. And he said, sounds like a great idea. So here we are, returning to his place. We're trying to uh, find it. It's one of his houses down there. This is about as out there as you can get. Mike, let's see those shoes. What are you wearing? <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing some, some tire shoes I got in Kampala. They're not the best hiking shoes, but I'm kind of trying to, I don't know, replicate the village life for a, for a day. So I see a lot of people wearing these. A lot. And so I figure, why not try it for a day? No more than a couple minutes away. And I can't think of a more beautiful place to spend the night than right here with this lake and these Woo. goats and these banana trees. This is gonna be pretty cool. Go. Look at the new mattress! The mattress looks pretty good. What do you think, Apoid? <laughs> pretty nice? Yeah. But this is going to be for Doreen and the, and the new child, right? Doreen? What do you think? <laughs> oh, it's awesome. We've came down to the neighbors to try some traditional porridge. Is that right, Apoid? <laughs> Hugh wants to go swimming for some reason. Let's see it. Oh. That is nice. It's nice? But it's really deep. Wow. Yeah. It's the second deepest lake in Africa, so I would assume. It is pretty far in the water. Like Yeah, it's deep, deep down. Water, and Apori, can you swim? Mm. We're about to leave to go canoeing, and uh, we're not exactly sure if everyone in this canoe knows how to swim, so I don't want to have to save the phone and the people, so I think I think we're going to leave the phone on the shore. Time for more porridge. Woo. You already know there's more porridge. <laughs> Got some sweet potato, avocado, some ugali, and a matoke bean mix. Looks so good. We had a great first night. Mike is trying out the new mattress. It's working good so far. Morning from Lake Bunyoni. <laughs> Yes. Not a bad view to wake up to. <laughs> Irish potatoes. Let's see them, Benson. Yes. Nice. <laughs> Big Mike harvesting in the flip flops. Uh, Aganje. <laughs> <laughs> it's day two with Apodo at his place, and we're actually heading to the lake right now to try out some fishing. Apodo whipped up a homemade fishing rod. Apodo had the had the hook in the water for literally five seconds and he pulled it up. Look at this monster! Look at this monster! Half the size of me! It's so like a big. perch almost. Apodo is just killing the game here with our stick rod. He's catching these fish left and right. Boom! There's another one. Another one. Yeah. Good haul of fish. Mike, satisfied? Yeah, yeah. Well, they caught a lot of fish with our little mm -hmm. stick. Now we're gonna head back, hook them up, have a little lunch, and then we're gonna head to Kigali. <laughs> the fish are ready. More porridge with a stew with matoke, Irish potatoes, and looks like a G nut sauce, and of course, more sweet potatoes. Goodbye! See ya! We just said goodbye to our friends on Lake Bunyoni. Now we're heading back to Kabale for the final mini bus of our journey. We have one more two hour short taxi remaining before we're at our final destination, Kigali. It doesn't feel real yet. <laughs> Mutufuga bubinyo na